Good evening, everyone. This is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lab and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials here on Facebook. If you're joining us on YouTube, please be sure to join our Facebook group. That link is in the video description and at the end of this video. And if you're joining us live on Facebook, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find all of our videos after they are live on our neatly organized playlist. Jasper is also here. He just can't stay out of it today. That's enough. Um, today I'm excited to show you guys how to create your own window clings. Now, um, the iColor White Toner Printer offers two different types of window cling media that does also work with Oki printers and all other white toner uh, printers that are available. It is available in white or clear. And thanks to the, the unique capabilities of the iColor printers that allow you to overprint and underprint by moving your cartridges, you're actually going to be able to, um, you're actually gonna be able to create window clings that can be stuck a variety of different ways. So you can set them up to be stick on the inside of a window, invisible on the outside, or vice versa. And you can also create them to be stuck on the inside, invisible on the inside, or outside, invisible on the outside. So this creates a lot of options for the kind of product that you can add to your business. Me personally, I think window clings are really great for around the holidays. Um, and if you have kids, they're just, they're just fun all the time and you can add them to your car and you can even use them to market, um, you know, like child on board logos and things like that for cars. So just some options as far as that goes. And on top of that, window clings are great to market to small businesses, whether they want to provide them as a small item that the, that's a promotional material that someone might stick in their vehicle, or if they want to just use it to jazz up their own window space, change a logo, add new hours, it gives them a lot of possibilities. The window clean media is really very affordable. It's um, under $2 per sheet for eight and a half by 11, and it's right around $7 if you choose the banner size. So lots of room for profit as far as I'm concerned, and I think that that's one of the really unique aspects of this media, besides the fact that it's pretty easy to use. So in, in addition to showing you how to print it, I'm actually gonna show you how to also cut it with a silhouette plotter. Now, I knew that if I did this video, plenty of people were gonna ask me, can I cut this with my silhouette? It's probably the most common question. Everyone wants to be able to cut stuff with their vinyl plotter. So I figured I might as well just skip right ahead and make sure that I did cover that for you guys. The good news is, is that you can. We're gonna start by setting it up in silhouette um, so that we can utilize the registration marks, which of course is the crucial part of getting the silhouette to cut. Now, unlike um, when you traditionally use the print and cut and you print to your inkjet printer, we're gonna actually need to export our file and then import it into the iColor Pro Rip software. So I'm gonna walk you through all of those and I'm gonna show you how to swap out the toner cartridges for printing in the CMYK queue and also the, um, the underprint queue that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna cover a lot today. This video is gonna be a little bit longer than normal, but I hope that I will answer all of your questions. And if you're thinking to yourself, but why would I wanna to have to cut my window cling with the vinyl plotter? The reason why is because that's one little thing that really doesn't take very long, as you're gonna see, and it just creates a more professional product. And at the end of the day, we wanna be putting out the most professional product we can so that we can com compete with that cheap stuff that's made in China, we wanna be able to put out a better quality product and a professional product that people are gonna look at and say, wow, I really want that. And they don't need to know that, you know, you might've just made it in your office at home where your dog also sleeps like I do. So anyways, I think that being able to cut this with um, any vinyl plotter is definitely a huge benefit. I cannot speak to the print cut features of any other plotter that's out there or the programs that are associated with it. I've only ever used Silhouette. I recommend that you just try some of the media on your own and see if it works. So let's go ahead and kick you guys over to the computer and I will show you guys how to get your print page set up and we will show you guys how this works. I'm gonna be working in Silhouette Studio Business Edition. You must have the Business Edition to be able to export any file type within Silhouette Studio. I know that some people like to use the screen snipping method if they haven't upgraded to Business Edition, but unfortunately that will not work for what we're trying to do today. Not only does that diminish the resolution and the quality of the graphic, 
but in this case, we need the accuracy of our page size and the registration marks that we're going to be using to ensure that the silhouette is able to read it and cut it accordingly. Remember that our end goal in what we're doing today is to have a professional looking window cling, which we can sell to our customers for a premium profit. The more attention to detail that you have and, and little things like using a vinyl plotter to cut it, the better that outcome will be and the more likely your customer base is to want to spend the money. Typically, the print and cut feature in Silhouette is all done within Silhouette Studio and you don't need to export anything. But because we're using a specialty printer, we want to be utilizing the software that comes with the iColor printer. So we're going to start by adjusting our page. We can do this by clicking on the page setup panel and the top of our toolbar. If you're using a cutting mat, you'll want to select the one that you are using. I personally prefer to cut without a cutting mat, so I'm going to leave this at none. I've had my silhouette for about five years and it has been through a lot. And in those five years, I've probably used a cutting mat a handful of times at best and only to cut small scraps. We'll adjust our media size to letter size. The eye color window cling in both clear and white is available in letter, tabloid, and banner size. So it gives you a lot of variety in the different size uh, decals that you can make and is great to market towards businesses, uh, parents, and really just for fun. I think that window clings are great for the holidays and I always try and grab them myself. We want to make sure that we have checked both show print border and show cut border. And I'm going to go ahead and click over to turn off the grid because it makes it difficult to see everything else. Now the reason why I said that you want to make sure you have your cut border and print butter border checked is so that you can make sure that your graphic doesn't extend into this area where it's not going to get cut. Because I'm not using a mat, we will not get all the way to the edge. We're going to lose about half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Again, I really prefer not to use a mat. My silhouette cutter tends to work better without a mat, so I just go with what works for me, and I advise you to do the best, to do the same. We'll click on our registration marks tab and turn those on. Today, I'm going to be printing in the CMYK queue for our white window cling, and I'm going to be using the underprint queue for our clear window cling. Neither of those require your graphic to be mirrored, so our registration marks are going to be perfect as they are. If we were going to be using the overprint queue, which is something I will show in another video, then we would have to mirror all of our individual graphics and make sure that our document itself is not mirrored when it's in the program because that will mess up the registration marks and make it so the silhouette can't read them. Just a friendly reminder that we are not a silhouette crafting group and although I do use silhouette in some videos because I know that it benefits those who are following and in this case um, a lot of people I know were going to ask if they would be able to cut this media with a vinyl plotter so I wanted to show how to do it with the most one of the most common uh, household vinyl plotters. And that's why I'm doing the video this way. But we are not a Silhouette group otherwise. And if you have questions on how to operate Silhouette, I highly recommend you refer to a Silhouette group. Next thing we want to do is import our graphics. So I'll go to File and Merge. I'm going to use these little gnomes, which will be available on my website after this video. I think that they are really cute. And that's not just because I doodled them up. Obviously, our gnomes are much too big, so we'll go ahead and click at the corner and decrease their size. You can also hit the lock to lock the aspect ratio at the top and then decrease them as well. I'm just going to try and make them both the same height. So the next thing that we want to do is create a cut outline and offset it. Now, because these are PNG files, they do not naturally have a cut outline. To create our own cut outline, we're going to go over to the trace panel, which is this one that looks like a piece of toast with a butterfly on it. We'll hit select trace area. We'll click and drag. 
and then we will increase the threshold to make sure that we are getting solid fill around the outside. See, we're not quite covered in there, so I'm just gonna kind of keep increasing it. And then we'll hit trace outer edge. And then we'll go ahead and do the same on our other guy. Select trace area, click and drag, increase that threshold, select trace outer edge. Now the next thing that we wanna do is open our layers panel and we're going to hide our PNG portion so that we can better see that outline. To do this, you're gonna click on your little arrow on the bottom and then the one that looks like um, two squares. If you click on the gnome, it'll show you which layer it is and you just click on that eye and then it hides it. Now the purpose of this is so that we can see this outline. We're gonna go ahead and set an offset and the reason why we're doing this is twofold. First, although the silhouette has fairly good accuracy, Anyone who's actually used it will tell you that it is not 100% accurate. Sometimes the overages or underages that it has can mean that your gnome, in this case, might have white over here from the window cling material and be cut into the graphic over here. Because we're trying to create a professional product that your customers are gonna love, whether it's a small business or a family or just for friends or your customer base, we wanna make sure that we really have the best looking quality product. So we're gonna go ahead and set an offset. And if you've ever purchased window clings, you know that they always have an offset, even if it's clear or white, they pretty much always have that little, that little margin, so to speak, around them. So to do this, we're gonna click on our outline and we're gonna click on the offset tool, offset panel, which is the star with the outline. We're just gonna click on where it says offset. You can, of course, adjust this with the distance here. I personally, this is set at one eighth of an inch and I think that that's perfect. So I'm gonna hit apply and that one is done. And I'll click on the next one, hit offset and hit apply again. And that one is done. Now we don't need these internal cut lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag them out of the way. And then I'm just gonna delete them off of our page. Now I'm gonna go back to the layers panel and make our gnomes visible again. You can see that we have this nice red outline. That's what we're going, that's what will be our cut line in the end. So now we can go ahead and place our gnomes anywhere we want on the page. I really try and maximize space for the most part. I highly recommend you do as well. Um, we could certainly duplicate these and make them smaller, add other graphics. Um, of course, if you're using something like the um, the tabloid pages that of course gives you more to work with as well. Before we can export this um, PDF, we need to make sure that our cut lines are turned to invisible. And this is because otherwise when we export our PDF, those red lines are gonna show up as well. And what we really want is just to have the registration marks and our characters. So to do that, you're gonna go ahead and go File, Save As, Save to Hard Drive. And then you'll select the PDF option and you'll go ahead and give it a name. Now I already did this because um, if you've ever used Silhouette before, you know that it can be really glitchy, especially when it comes to saving files. And sometimes it crashes on me and sometimes it just takes forever. So I already went ahead and made sure that I had that done. So the one that we're gonna be using is this one right here. I've already exported this as a PDF. And you see, I did make them a little bit smaller so we could have four on there. So now we're gonna go over to the iColor ProRip software. As I mentioned, we're gonna be using two different cues. Now I wanna get both of them set up just so I can show you, and then we'll print one and cut it We'll print the white and cut it first, and then I'll show you guys how to change out your toner cartridges. Now, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, it's this right here. So because we're gonna be using the white window cling paper first, or for one of what we're gonna demo today, the white one already has white, so you don't need your white toner. But one of the things you can do is add in, is swap out the white for the black, 
and you'll be able to have um, just a better vibrancy of your design. I definitely want to take advantage of this because my gnomes do have a lot of black and darker green, so I think that they're going to look better all around. Now, just to kind of look at the three cues that are available to you, the overprint cue is probably the one that we use the most. This is the one that puts the, um, because when you're printing a transfer, it prints all of your colors first, and then it prints the white last. And then because that white is what is going to be underneath your design on the shirt to give it that vibrancy to stick up. One of the really great things about this program is it makes it foolproof. Depending on the cue that you're on, you will see how your toner cartridges are aligned and all you have to do is follow that. Where it says clear, it's referring to the fluorescent cartridges and of course there's always the sublimation cartridges as well. Now in the overprint cue, or sorry, the underprint cue, which is the one that we're going to be using for our clear window cling. If we click on cue, we'll see that it shows us that the white and clear needs to be first towards the back and that our cyan is going to be moved to the front. This little feature, being able to move that white to the back or have it in the front, is a proprietary uh, feature of eye color printers. It's something that's not available on any white toner printers, and it opens up a lot of really cool capabilities with the different types of transfers that you can create and the different type of media that they can accommodate. That's one of the reasons why I think that this printer is well worth the investment, especially if you really want to be able to offer a good bit of diversity in your business and have a printer that is all in one because you can do sublimation, you can use the fluorescent toner to do those glitter transfers and have like that real beautiful glitter color or effect to it. And of course, then you have the white toner option as well. So since I'm already in this, I'll go ahead. I already have my gnome set up. And then the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we select the appropriate media type. It is already selected for us. It is the Uninet Clear Window Cling. We don't need to resize this. We don't need to adjust anything with the colors. We'll click on page and the instructions tell us it should be set at thick to 220G and it is. So we will go ahead and use that setting. And then I'm going to click over onto our CMYK queue and same thing. We will select our Uninet white window cling. Let's go. Make sure everything is matched up here. And just like that, we are ready to print because there is no special anything needed. So I'll go ahead and click that and we will send it off to the printer and then I will show you guys how to cut it. All right, there's our print fresh out of the printer. It's nice and warm also. <laughs> so the little square and the hatch marks that you see are exactly what we set up in Silhouette. And that is what our Silhouette is gonna be trying to read to cut. Let me set that there while I put you guys up on the tripod. So what we want to do is basically we're going to move um, our blade over top of this square. And the reason why we're going to do that is to kind of help the silhouette easier read those registration marks, especially if you're not using a mat, it seems to help. So we'll just line it up. I've already moved my little roller stopper thing over, you know, because that helps give us a grip. My silhouette is a little bit old. <laughs> if you guys have followed my group for a while, then you know um, my silhouette has had ample use and abuse. My little touch screen doesn't work quite as fluidly as it used to. Ooh, that was further than we wanted to go. Now, if you are attempting to cut um, you know, with the registration marks and you get a registration read error, which is very common when you're using glossy materials, the way that you work around that is by doing what I just did. 
Now I have a silhouette cameo too, so mine is older model as well. But see how the blade is right over top of the square? That is because the laser eye that reads these little lines is on the other side of the other side of the um, blade. And so we're just kind of setting it up to give it its best chance to hopefully read the first time. Kind of saves you a lot of frustration by doing that. So I'm going to be using the heat transfer smooth setting. If you are using a CB09 blade or aren't sure with your silhouette what's going to be the best setting, just use that test cut feature that's built into silhouette. So the first thing that it's doing is reading those little marks and you can kind of see maybe see the red that's the laser so it's going to read those marks first to determine the space and then it'll go ahead and cut out the outline of our little gnomes I hope you guys are enjoying this tutorial. I know when we watch the machines, there isn't a whole lot <laughs> to talk about. Um, always, you can leave your questions and comments below and I will answer them after we are done being live. This is just about done cutting. All right, we'll hit unload. And... It cut the backing just a little bit. So I'm trying to pull it, there we go, pull it up without pulling the backing. So now you could send this whole sheet to a customer. Of course, you might wanna put more on it to really get your money's worth. But if not, we just peel that guy right off of there. And Jasper has this window he likes to lay in front of. And if I turn you guys, or if I raise you guys up, you'll be able to see this. This is his favorite spot to lay. Now he can have a little friend. And there is our window cling printed with the white background. Pretty cute, right? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and print the clear one also. And I'm just, just so I can show that to you guys as well. I will be doing a second video covering the clear more in depth. Uh, Let's see if I can make this so you guys can actually see this computer screen without me switching back over. Oh, also, I'll just show you this really quick. If you use a cutting mat, you can use the HTV glitter setting and it will cut nice smooth all the way through with the backing. And then you can, of course, individually bag these and sell them like this as well. I, that was when I tested this out earlier. I didn't show you putting in the black in place of the white before we started because I already had it set up but I do wanna show you guys how to adjust your cue like I talked about at the beginning of this video. So what you're gonna do is just pop that little lever and open. And even though it shows it on the computer screen, if you're ever wondering how your toner cartridges should be set up, it is also conveniently inside. Now these are relatively simple. You just put your hands in the little grooves that are right there and pull them straight up. Now I'm just going to leave you guys up here like this. And there we go. I think you'll be able to see pretty well. So because we're going to be using that, um, our underprint cue, 
we're going to move the cyan to the front and we're going to be putting our white toner back as you can see they honestly they just slide right in it helps if you're a little taller <laughs> okay and then all of them come with this little plastic tray so you just want to put it back in the plastic tray and then it also has one of these um, photo sensitivity bags so we're gonna slide it in there and that protects it from the light and just keeps it safe when we're not using it we'll go ahead and close our cover and i'm going to send this to print um, it'll take just a minute. You're going to hear it kind of sound like it's a spaceship in the background while I set you guys up on the silhouette. adjust the tripod. I try not to do this in videos. Okay. Hopefully that wasn't terrible for <laughs> you guys. Plug our silhouette into the computer really quick. And once again, here's our transfer got those registration marks and i'm just going to move through this a little bit quickly again since we did already do it we're going to go ahead and move our blade up so that it's just over top of that eye to give the silhouette the best chance of being able to read those um, registration marks we are using the heat transfer smooth setting and again, if you want to use the um, heat transfer glitter setting, that'll allow you to cut them out completely and just have them as, um, you know, with the backing and sell them that way too, which I think is a great option for something that's a little bit more professional as well. There we go. As always, if you guys have any questions, please be sure to leave them below. Um, I really enjoy our White Toner Wednesdays and I hope that you do as well. There's just so many amazing things that you can do with one of these printers and add them to your business. I'll let the silhouette finish cutting because it is very noisy. Okay. And we'll give Jasper a different friend. So <laughs> there's uh, one of our clear graphics, or planted on the clear window cling, sorry. And let me just bring him over here. Jasper has joined us. He's really actually watching for this squirrel that comes in our yard. He gets really upset that these squirrels just have the audacity to live out there. <laughs> so, Hi, say hello everyone. All right, there is our clear and there's our one printed on white. 
it's hard to decide which one you like better. I think I like the clear a little bit better because it is more window cling-ish. Uh, but at the same time, I think that the white has a lot of possibilities, um, especially maybe come winter if you want to do like snowmen and things like that. If you're interested in learning more about the world of white toner and especially eye color printers, be sure to check out our videos on Wednesdays uh, for our white toner Wednesday, but also head over and join white toner transfer support group on Facebook. You will find so much valuable information there and such amazing tutorials. And I learn a lot from that group and I know that you will too. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and I hope you have a great rest of your day.